You're watching Kitten Prime. Thank you for staying with us. Let's bring you some breaking news from the Supreme Court that has been hearing that case touching on the retirement age of Supreme Court judges Kalpana Rawal and Philip Tnoy. And as we speak, uh, Willie Mutunga, who is the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, has just ruled that the orders uh, from the Court of Appeal stand. In other words, um, judges Kalpana Rawal and Philip Tunoy will retire at the age of 70 as opposed to 74. Remember, the two had uh, gone to court to contest um, that decision to have them retire at the age of 70, saying uh, they were sworn in before the promulgation of the new constitution. Chief Justice William Mutunga has just uh, ruled that uh, the orders of the Court of Appeal stand. He's also ruled that orders given by Njoki Ndungu have been vacated in other words in simpler terms for you uh, those orders have been thrown out and uh, Chief Justice Willie Mutunga they are saying Kalpana Rawal and of course Philip Tunoy can appeal this particular ruling when a new Supreme Court bench is constituted breaking news at the bottom end of your screen touching on the retirement age of Supreme Court judges Kalpana Rawal and Philip Tunoy let's bring in Alicia Ngoya an advocate of the High Court Alicia, this has been a very long ruling, four hours, so to speak. What does this all mean? Uh, first, it was an important ruling for the Supreme Court for a number of reasons. Uh, there is no time in the history of this country that a court has found itself as conflicted as the Supreme Court has found itself today in my uh, reading of our judicial history. And uh, number two, this ruling comes at a critical time because it comes barely two days uh, before the Honorable William Mutunga leaves his seat as Chief Justice from his own uh, advanced uh, retirement plan. And uh, therefore, this was going to be a critical ruling in terms of uh, transition management. So it's going to be definitive in terms of transition politics and transition management at the Supreme Court. So these were politic politics surrounding yeah. these rulings ruling that rendered the ruling extremely significant. But more importantly, the, the vision that this ruling attracted from judicial officers, and I'm not necessarily talking about the philosophical division, even just the political division, you could see the language by the various judges at some point in time becoming very intemperate, also uh, attracted quite a bit of attention and will be a subject of debate for quite a time to come as people look at the significance the relevant and uh, the new dimensions that should govern the workings of the Supreme Court of Kenya moving forward as one of the institutions that were expected to revolutionize the workings of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. So that, those are factors that I think render this ruling much more significant than the technical legal questions that the ruling was addressing. Alicia, Chief Justice uh, William Tunga has just said Kalpana Rawal and Philip Tunoy can appeal when a new court, uh, Supreme Court bench is constituted. So basically, this is it. Essentially, you know, uh, something funny is that uh, substantively, the appeal by Tunoy and the appeal by Rawal have not been determined on their merits. Mm. The court has withdrawn itself by a majority of three to two judges from entertaining that appeal. The judges have uh, reasoned, the majority have reasoned that it is, it's been such a scenario of conflicts of interest that uh, the stature of the court would be extremely diminished if the court were to sit and hear this uh, matter. So the appeal remains there hanging in abeyance, which cannot be heard by this court as currently constituted, which is why um, uh, then if a new bench is instituted and uh, they feel for academic reasons, like okay. appealing, then they would appeal because remember, he has said once the new court is constituted, that court would have been constituted without the two. So okay. the court would be fully established without the two, and therefore even appealing would be purely for academic reasons. It have Alicia, no practical Alicia stay with me. Stay with me for a few minutes. Okay. Um, I can see live pictures uh, from the Supreme Court. Uh, Paul Mwite, a lawyer there, um, just addressing the Supreme Court. I'm hoping you can listen in just a little bit. Alicia, stay with me. 12 by the applicants. There is the issue of the application by Omutata. It is not clear to us what the applicant expects, or rather the applicants, 
expect will happen within the 21 days in respect of which we are asking for a stay. The reasons given for allowing Omotata's objection are amongst others that four of the judges of this court expressed themselves on the issue as to whether the age is 70 or 74 and would therefore not be perceived to be impartial. What are the applicants expecting will happen with regard to those four judges in the next 21 days? Finally, it is our submission that indeed in the very unlikely event of the appeals succeeding, before an impartial and neutral bench, whenever that might be in the future. The appeals will not be read at new gratuity, my lord, to your leadership, because damages will be an adequate remedy. If, in the unlikely event they succeed, that the retirement age is 74, they will simply be paid the balance of the time that they have not served. Lord, it's already a finding that there is no proprietorship in public office. It doesn't have to be that a Mr. X must be the judge of the Supreme Court or Mrs. Y must be the deputy chief justice. There is no proprietorship. So that public interest inclines towards what this court has done by a majority, open the doors that had been closed to the Judicial Service Commission by the expert elders on the 27th of May, so that the Judicial Service Commission can proceed expeditiously with the recruitment of the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, and a judge of the Supreme Court, so that we can have a Supreme Court fully constituted with a full complement of the seven judges. That is what public interest demands. Let's not have any further delay on that whatsoever, as in when a neutral bench is constituted, whatever that might be, and in the unlikely event of this court holding that the retirement age is 74, not 70, the damages in my submission will be an adequate. The live proceedings from the Supreme Court of Kenya currently going on. Uh, lawyer Paul Muite addressing the bench. Uh, you can still watch uh, the live proceedings from the Supreme Court on KTN News, that is DSTV Channel 274, Zuku Channel 14, and GoTV Channel 94. Um, if you're interested in that particular ruling that is currently being given at the Supreme Court of Kenya. So let me just run you uh, by what has just happened. Chief Justice says William Mutunga has uh, ruled that orders uh, uh, from the Court of Appeals stand, which essentially means Kalpana Rawal and Philip Tunoy will retire at the age of 70 as per the Constitution. He also says ruled that orders given by Njokin Dungu have been, uh, so to speak, thrown out. And uh, he's asked Kalpana Rawal and Philip Tunoy to appeal when the new Supreme Court bench is constituted. And we have just spoken to Elisha Ongoya, an advocate of the High Court, trying to help us uh, understand what has just happened. So you want to be part of that conversation, you can watch KTN News.